Today we've got the brand new Castle Cobra 10 ESC, and this thing looks pretty interesting. This is coming on the heels of the Castle Cobra 8 release. This is the replacement for the Mamba Monster X, and it looks like this is gonna be the replacement for the Mamba X. As you can see, this is quite a bit smaller than the Cobra 8. It's a little bit shorter and has a quite a bit lower height. Like the Cobra 8, it has mounting screws that are M2. They did seem a little undersized for the mass of the Cobra 8, but this is also quite a bit lighter. This is a censored ESC, and it will do up to 6S, which I think is pretty interesting for a small ESC that probably won't be used on larger than 1 tenth scale vehicles. And it kind of makes me wonder if 6S might not be a bad way to go with 1 tenth scale vehicles, given that it's more efficient and might allow you to get more power with the same weight of battery. You can see here we've got Castle branded 12 gauge input wiring. We do have the proprietary Castle connector for their fan. I think it would be a good idea for them to move on to a more generic style connector. So if people want to upgrade the fans, they don't have to worry about this connector, but you can always replace it on this end as well. As with most Castle ESCs, both the main power cable and the sensor cable are replaceable. We do have the classic Castle switch here, which you may or may not like. It's been around a long time. And at least in my experience, probably isn't quite as durable as some of the competition. This has four millimeter bullets. It has an eight amp BEC, which is voltage adjustable in the software. We're gonna talk about that software here in just a few minutes. We're gonna be putting this ESC in a couple different cars today. It has some pretty cool features for bashing and some neat features for crawling that you may never have seen before. Now removing this plastic cover, we can see inside here we have a 30 millimeter fan. Underneath that, we've got the heat sink. You can see the output connectors here. And then you can see how they do the waterproofing. Basically what they do is they have their housing. This is an aluminum housing. They take the PCB, set it inside the housing, and then they pot that in epoxy. Basically they mix up some epoxy, pour it in over the top, and then that covers up everything and seals it in. This ESC comes with a new USB-C programmer. And to go along with that programmer is a new version of the software. All right, we're gonna be pushing this little guy to its limit. But before we do that, we need to put a connector on. I'm gonna be running an XT90 because that's what most of my smaller batteries use. It's possible if you're not gonna be pushing this very hard that you might be able to get away with an XT60, but I wouldn't recommend it. I think XT90 is a minimum for an ESC like this. Our first test subject is gonna be this awesome Techno MT410 2.0, but first we need to take this system out. I had a complete blowout of this shock, lost all the fluid and knocked the cap off. So we need to address this before we can take it out and bash it. Not entirely sure why this happened. I have had a few problems with the rear end of this MT410 in the past. And whereas the droop screws are where they're supposed to be, I still might need to adjust them a little bit. All right, let's see what the damage is here. When these things come apart, sometimes they can cause a lot of damage and sometimes they can be fine and just be put right back together again. I didn't actually look at this one when it came apart the first time. I just jammed it back together in the field. So you'll be finding out with me. Top feels a little gritty. The threads look okay. Is there a seal in there though? Yes, there's a seal in there as well. So we should just be able to clean this out, put some fresh fluid in it, then put it back together again. Now while I'm refilling, this would be a great time to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And let me know down in the comments what you wanna see in the future. What's your favorite kind of videos that I make? I make these videos for you guys and I love hearing from you. That feels nice and smooth. I think this will be just fine. Now we'll just install this back on the truck. I'm gonna go ahead and charge up a beefy 4S pack. Let's see if this Cobra's got any bite. So far, I'm really impressed with this ESC. Castle ESCs are some of the most responsive ESCs you can get, and this one's no different. And not only that, but you're able to customize this thing with a ton of different configurations. And in this configuration is where a lot of the value of this ESC comes into play. These new 32-bit ESCs have a lot of features I've never seen before and make the ESC behave a little bit differently than you might be used to. Under the basic tab, we have things like adjustable low voltage cutoff, the adjustable BEC voltage, reverse type, and the ability to disable the idle and error beeps. 
items. Power gives us the ability to change the startup power, maximum power, reverse percentage, and then punch. Keep in mind that punch on castle ESCs is reversed from punch on hobby wing ESCs. 0% punch control on a castle ESC is the same as 100% punch on a hobby wing ESC. Under the break screen is where some of the more interesting features lie and some of the features that might make this feel a little bit different than you're used to. With most ESCs, the transition from reverse to forward is an immediate full power transition. These ESCs allow you to set a reverse to forward break amount. And to go along with that is something called break lockout time. This break lockout time basically creates a pause between forward and reverse or reverse and forward. And that timer resets every time you try to give it input. So if you're not used to that, it could seem like the ESC isn't functioning properly. Of course, you can set that to zero to just eliminate that feature, but it's just something to get used to. And then down here at the bottom, a great new crawler feature is the power drag break or hill hold feature. This is going to allow us to stop on a hill and have the ESC hold the truck in place until we want to move again. I'll show you that in just a minute when we put this thing in a crawler. Under advanced is something you don't get with other brand ESCs, and this is the auxiliary wire mode. This allows you to plug that second wire into a free channel on your receiver and then lets you control programming functions via a channel on your transmitter. Under the motor tab, we have basic reversing as well as the ability to run a brushed motor, limit the current in case you're using a weaker battery. These ESCs also have really advanced logging features, including an accelerometer that can tell you how many G-forces you pulled throughout your bashing session and a bunch of other really cool stuff. Below that, we've got throttle brake and reverse curves and the ability to update the firmware. Whenever you're done changing settings, make sure you hit the update button to upload those settings to your ESC. Some of these features are really gonna shine in a crawler, so let me get this installed in my favorite trail rig. First thing we need to do is get this stock brushed system out of here. Unfortunately, the ESC and receiver are combined, so we're gonna have to program a new receiver for all these servos, which should be fun. Fortunately, removing the motor in this truck is very easy. You just need to take out six screws and then the motor comes right out. And we just need to peel up the ESC receiver combo. And this thing's ready for more power and control. We're just gonna be using the stock pinion and motor mount as they should swap right over. There we go. Now we just need to put it back in the car. And now we just need to install the ESC and program the receiver, which I'm not gonna subject you to. Let me get this done and I'll show you what it looks like. There we go, guys. She's looking good. Let's see how this thing crawls. And when we come back, we're gonna torture test this ESC. Well, I'm definitely no professional crawler, but that felt pretty good for general bashing around and trail riding. It crawls nice and slow, the hill hold feature works great, and overall, feels like a good crawling ESC. But like I said, I'm not a crawler, I'm a basher, and this thing can do 6S, so let's put it in the Team Co Rally Synchro and see what this thing's really capable of. Now, obviously, this is just gonna be a temporary install because 6S on a 1 8 scale buggy is definitely not what this ESC is designed for, but I wanna see just what it can handle. Obviously, this isn't normally how the ESC would be mounted, nor how it would normally be wired, but like I said, this is just temporary, so I don't feel like taking all this apart just to mount it up. Well, I think that looks sufficiently sketchy now. Keep in mind, if this thing blows up, it's my fault, not the ESC's fault. This is not what it was designed for. That being said, let's throw a 6S battery in this thing and see what it can really do.
So there we go, guys, the Castle Cobra 10 ESC. This thing's awesome. It works really well for smaller bashers and crawlers, and even works pretty well on 6S in a 1.8 scale buggy. Looking at the logs, this thing barely got up to 160 degrees, and that was non-stop bashing in tall grass, which is about as bad as it gets. This thing has explosive power, tons of features, and is a really cool ESC. And it better because it's very expensive. This ESC alone is 180 bucks, and it goes up from there with various motor combos. And no matter how you look at it, that is a ton of money for essentially a 1 10th scale ESC. Is it worth it? I'm gonna say maybe. If you're looking for a budget option, obviously you're gonna wanna look somewhere else, but if you're looking for the best possible ESC you can put in your 1 10th scale vehicle, this is probably it. And if you're looking for the best content on YouTube, this is probably it.